Okay, the next one is reading comprehension, I'm guessing. Yes. Okay, so um, see, we may not have time to complete the entire reading comprehension section, but some of you had challenges with reading comprehension section, right? Um, now, when it comes to reading comprehension section, um, the first thing we'll do is uh, analyze the questions, right? One. Two is, and I, and, I, and I keep saying this because not all of us, see there are two ways in which I can approach reading comprehension, okay? Approach number one, I will read the entire passage and I will answer the questions. That's approach number one, right? For some of you, that might actually save time. Like if your reading fluency is above average, then you can do that. Huh? That is one approach. The second approach is, because we get, we panic in the exam if the passage is really long. And I think this is a very long passage. It looks like at least 800 plus words. Um, I'm just going to share some strategies and we're going to look at a couple of questions. Um, I know reading comprehension is not a favorite question type for all, but unfortunately that carries the maximum marks in our exam when it comes to the English section, right? A minimum of 7 to 10 questions are always there when it comes to reading comprehension. So, approach number one, read the entire passage, answer the questions. So for a passage of 800 plus length, if you are able to read 250 words and plus words in a minute, then you are an above average reader. Okay. Approach number two, scan the questions and there are vocabulary based questions. We finish that first, right? Synonym antonym questions because words are highlighted in the passage. Um, all we have to do is just, uh, what do I say, look at the context where that bold or highlighted word appears and then apply context clues, figure out the meaning, answer the questions, right? If there are no vocabulary based questions, then I have to look at, there will always be a, a positive detail question, a negative detail question, which means uh, what is true according to the passage, positive detail question, what is not true according to the passage, negative detail question, okay? Those sort of questions will be there. But for the most part, trust me, some questions are direct references from the passage, which means the passage will directly support those questions. How can I, if, if, I, if I take a lot of time uh, to scan for those questions, right? Another strategy that I've shared is just pay attention to topic sentence, closing sentence of paragraphs. You'll answer at least two, three questions by just paying attention to the topic sentence, which is first sentence and closing sentence of that paragraph. Yeah. Okay. So these are pretty much the basis to approach reading comprehension. So let's do the first step, right? We're not going to, uh, uh, maybe, maybe you can, you can take time wh while practicing a reading comprehension session, apply these, right? We may not have the time to read the entire thing right now, but we're going to do one thing at least. Let's try and answer three, four questions. Let's look at the questions first. First question, how are Chinese entrepreneurs different from India's uh, technology entrepreneurs? Answer in the context of the passage. So every time I read a question, I am mentally making note of keywords, right? So in the question, basically they're asking difference between Chinese entrepreneurs and Indian entrepreneurs, right? So entrepreneurs is my keyword here. Second question, find the correct statement in respect of the market targets of China and Indian startups. Again, here my keyword is startups, market targets, market targets, Indian startups. So first question, Chinese India's entrepre entrepreneurs, that's the, that's the keyword. Second question is China and Indian startups, market targets. Okay, we're going to move forward. Third one, why do trailblazers like Alibaba and Tencent come into being? Very, very obvious keywords, right? Trailblazers, Alibaba, Tencent. Okay. Fourth one, which of the following statements is incorrect in the context of the given passage? So we saw a positive detail one. We're looking at a negative detail one. Questions like this, unfortunately, I have to read the entire passage. Okay. But another strategy that you can apply for a question like this also is to look at the options and look at keywords. For example, 
Look at A. It says the number of Indian technology companies listed on the US exchanges is very few in comparison to, the, to that of Chinese companies. So listed on the US exchange, that's my keyword. Web behind the wall provides guidance to foreign companies looking to enter China. This is my key phrase here. Twitter and Facebook are not allowed to provide their services in Chennai. Twitter and Facebook are my keywords here. KPCB based in Menlo Park has its offices both in Beijing and in KPCB becomes my keyword. So even in positive negative detailed questions, if I have to skip reading the entire paragraph, I will need to look for keywords in the options and scan for that. Okay. In the context itself, we will come across trailblazers in general means what? Trailblazers mean innovators. Basically, uh, somebody who's kind of one, you know, somebody who's, uh, what, how can I put this? I, I can say innovators can be trailblazers, but somebody who opens up new avenues. Okay. Uh, it's like they create a path for you where you can start something or follow something, a trailblazer. A trail means what? Have you, uh, what is that? Uh, what is that fairy tale? Hansel and Gretel, they get lost in the woods. It's an old uh, story. So they leave a trail of breadcrumbs. Right? So leaving a trail means creating a path. Trail blazer. Blazer means something, something extraordinary, something innovative, something creative. So they are almost like pathfinders, trail blazers. Okay? But again, in the context, like Vasco da Gama, okay. Pioneers. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on. Let's look at the questions again. Uh, let me project the screen. What according to the passage is necessary for the non-native entrepreneurs to compete in the Chinese market? So here my keyword is non-native entrepreneurs. What are the steps taken by the Chinese government to improve the performance metric of companies? Performance metric. Chinese government. These are my keywords. What is the line of difference between Indian and Chinese government towards their entrepreneurs? So difference in the governments. What fundamental methods does China adopt for developing consumer products in huge quantity? China developing consumer products in huge number. The methods is what they are looking for. So, uh, what's the last one? What according to the passage is the major lacuna in Indian government when it comes to entrepreneurship? Answer in the context of the passage. That's it. So, as I am reading the questions, I have identified some keywords. If I am somebody who has very poor reading skills or my reading fluency is below average, I will only scan for these words in the context. One way in which I can do that is to focus on the topic sentence and closing sentence of the paragraphs. I will be able to answer at least a minimum of 3-4 questions. So I don't have to completely or entirely skip reading comprehension section. Let me gain some marks, right? Now go back. Let's look at let's look at answering a couple of questions, okay? The first one is, is this the first question? Yes. How are Chinese entrepreneurs uh, different from India's technology entrepreneurs? Answer in the context of the passage. That's what it says, right? What according to the passage is a major lacuna in Indian government when it comes to entrepreneurship. So lacuna means here we're talking about um, I would say like a like a gap, like an, like an opportunity area, like a challenging area. So what according to the passage is a major gap in Indian government when it comes to entrepreneurship? What are they lacking? What is the missing part? Right? That's the meaning of lacuna here. Lacuna basically means a pit or a, or a cavity or something like that. Yeah, gap. Yeah, Vidya has mentioned it. Seems like there is no antonym synonym questions in this particular paragraph. Chalo, no problem. Let's go back. Yeah, here we are. So, I have to figure out difference between Chinese India, uh, India's technology entrepreneurs. Okay. A, B, C. So, can I quickly skim through this? Option A. About four-fifths of China accelerate a focus only on the Chinese market, whereas entire gamut of India's entrepreneurs focus on the markets of neighboring countries. Uh, Chinese entrepreneurs look outside the country's borders when they succeed at home whereas India's technology entrepreneurs find their products not suitable for foreign markets. More than 99% Chinese entrepreneurs focus only on Chinese consumers 
whereas India's technology entrepreneurs design and develop their products for markets in the US, Europe and Southeast Asia, which means I have to look for the point that the passage completely supports. Now, if I go back, right, and another thing I want to tell you is also mostly, mostly in terms of sequencing, okay, answers to the first, second, third, fourth question will come somewhere in the first, second, third, fourth, fifth paragraph, right. For a reading comprehension passage like this, I would advise you to read the entire passage and then answer the questions. You will actually end up saving time. You just need to work on your reading fluency. Right? I mean, just having looked at the questions, for me, a safe bet would be to read the entire passage, boss. Understand what the passage is. Even if it takes four minutes, no problem. Ideally, you should be able to read it within three minutes, 800 plus word count, or maybe a little more. Right? Four minutes also is fine because if I can't allot a minimum of five minutes for reading comprehension, then what's the point? I have to allot, right? That has the maximum number of marks in my English section. So plan in such a way that you have at least a minimum of five minutes. So even if you take four minutes to read the passage, in the next one minute, you'll be able to answer at least two, three questions. Yeah, that's how you should uh, plan or strategize your approach towards reading comprehension. So now if I look at the options, right, I'm looking at the um, first paragraph here, right, and I'm, I'm already able to capture some keywords that I looked at when I was analyzing the questions, right, for example, I may not get the answer to my first question, but I'm looking at, you know, I have, I had this in one of the questions, right, startups was another keyword, right, and look at this next paragraph itself, the uh, Opening the topic sentence says more than 99% of Chinese entrepreneurs only bear in mind Chinese consumers. It's right there. It's supporting point C for question number one. Right. And then the next paragraph immediately says this is in stark contrast to India's technology entrepreneurs. Again, the topic sentence, many of whom start by conceptualizing and designing offerings that target developed markets in the US and Europe and now even Southeast Asia, which means my keywords, Chinese entrepreneurs, India's technology entrepreneurs is covered, right? That was my first question, Hena. How are Chinese entrepreneurs different from India's technology entrepreneurs? My Both my keywords are covered in this, in the topic sentence of second and third paragraph. And there is a direct reference, right? There is a direct reference in option C, more than 99% Chinese entrepreneurs focus only on Chinese consumers whereas India's technology entrepreneurs design and develop their products for markets in the US blah 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 so what can be your option if it's saying more than 99% obviously it cannot be option A because it says only about four fifths of the China accelerator focus so out option A is out Chinese entrepreneurs look outside the country's borders when they succeed at home whereas India's technology entrepreneurs find their products not suitable for foreign markets this is not what the context is saying or is it are you following so, which means this, this, this first question, I have looked at the topic sentence of second and third paragraph. It is directly pointing to point C, option C in question number one. So, what will be our answer then for question number one? Option C, na? absolutely. You can just close your eyes and pick option C. Did you guys have anything different? Yes, right? So, Yes, boss, I haven't read the passage. I answered the first question. I looked at the topic sentence of second paragraph, third paragraph. I answered one mark I got. Great. Let's move on. Let's look at the next question. Find the correct statement in respect of the market targets of China and Indian startups. Hmm. So I, I saw a lot of startups here, right? Uh, while many Indian startups target overseas markets for Chinese entrepreneurs, the market is at home. Then see this again, you know, it becomes... A little cumbersome for me to answer the second question because I have to look for startups, my keyword, and see where and all it is appearing in the passage. So the best thing to do is either read the entire passage or not. Yeah. So what I, I would ideally do is what I I would ideally do is these positive detail, negative detail questions, no? I will skip as in I will not give importance to it as a sequence. I'll move on to the next question. Right? And that's what I'm gonna do for this one as well. 
I'm not going to look at this question right now. I'll come back to this question when I have time. Why do trailblazers like Alibaba and Tencent come into being? Third question. I just saw it when I was skimming for my uh, question one. Right? I saw it. Where was it? Right here. First paragraph, closing sentence. First paragraph, closing sentence. What does it say? Trailblazers like Alibaba and Tencent are shaped by fierce local competition, a unique brand of innovation and an ambitious government. Is that there in any of my options? Let's see. A. Trailblazers like Alibaba and Tencent come into being as a result of government pressure to do something different to attract the vast majority of customers. No, sorry. Trailblazers like Alibaba and Tencent come into being as a result of their innovative products. Yes, it says that. Trailblazers like Alibaba and Tencent come into being as a result of fierce local competition. Yes, both B and C are supported. Yes or no? So is it A, B, C, D or E? What is your answer for this one? We just saw the thing, right? Fierce local competition, unique brand of innovation, ambitious government. So what is our answer for the third one? Again, a closing sentence of first paragraph is giving me an answer to a question. What's your answer, guys? E, yes, correct. Right? Option E. Yeah, perfect. Dolvin also got that right. So we got one more mark. Let's look at the next one. Which of the following statements is incorrect in the context of the given passage? This again, I have to, too many keywords, right? I have to keep looking, I have to keep searching for that in the context. My keywords are US exchanges, web behind the wall, Twitter and Facebook, KPCB. So it can be anywhere in the passage, right? All of these. So it's going to take me time. I'm going to skip this. Okay, I'm going to skip this. I'm going to move to the next one. Negative detail, positive detail, I'm skipping. What according to the passage is necessary for the non-native entrepreneurs to compete in the Chinese market? So I have only one keyword here. Non-native entrepreneurs. Right? Let me just quickly skim through the options. It is necessary for the non-native entrepreneurs to master their technological advancements in order to compete with Chinese market. It is necessary for the non-native entrepreneurs to ensure providence of incentives from their own government so that the infrastructural blockage does not become a problem. C. It is necessary for the non-native entrepreneurs to master the Chinese language in order to compete with the Chinese market. So obviously, see this is a very logical question if you ask me. I'll tell you why. The answer is there in the question itself. Are you following? The answer is there in the question itself. I don't even have to look at the passage. If I am non-native, which means obviously I don't belong to China, I'm from a different country, right? And I'm trying to get access to that market, Chinese market. So if I'm a non-native entrepreneur, what is, what is necessary for me to compete in the Chinese market? What's the most logical thing you tell me without looking at the passage? Without looking at the passage, just looking at all these three options, according to you logically, what can be the answer? Apply simple logic. If I'm a non-native entrepreneur, the most logical thing for me to do is now let's check if the passage is supporting that, right? Just to make sure. Logically, if I apply logic without reading the passage, I know it has to be C, common sense. But is the passage supporting that? We'll have to see, right? And, and C says it is necessary for the non-native entrepreneurs to master the Chinese language in order to compete with the Chinese market. So let's, we, we're going to look for non-native entrepreneurs and where it appears. Okay. I'm just quickly skimming. Mostly I'm looking at only topic sentence, closing sentence. Uh, but anywhere, if I'm able to capture non-native entrepreneurs, I'm going to quickly stop. Ah, look at this. I got it. It says here, yeah, see here, non-native speakers. Okay. I got that and I, I'm going to read the entire context. It says in a country where only 0.73% of the population speaks English, uh, corporations from abroad must master the notoriously difficult Chinese language in order to compete an almost impossible feat for non-native speakers that Facebook blah blah blah. So this guy is doing it. Mark Zuckerberg is devoting time daily to master the Chinese language so we can expand on in the Chinese market as well. Right? So that's our answer right there. This again is a topic sentence of a paragraph. Yeah, I have only looked at the clue phrase, my, my keyword, non-native speakers, compete. So that's my answer, C. That's it. One more point. Yeah, let's, let's move to the next question. Clear? 
What are the steps taken by the Chinese government to improve the performance metric of companies? Okay. So, which means I need to, my keyword is performance metric. Yes or no? Okay. Let's see. Uh, quickly, let me skim through the options. The local government helps in nurturing science parks to encourage software development. Providence of incentives in tax and investment. The state offers seed funding to the startup entrepreneurs. Emphasis on research. All of these look like, see, I mean, I'm reading the options. All of these look like valid points, right? And they are specifically talking only about the Chinese government. There is no comparison here. They're saying, what did the Chinese government do to improve the performance metrics of their companies? Right? So I have all these points here. Everything seems logical. I just need to make sure the passage is supporting all of this somewhere. Right? So I'm going to go back. Have I been able to capture any uh, key points from the options? Yes, I have science parks nurturing, incentives in tax and investment, funding to startup entrepreneurs, research emphasis. So I have all these keywords. I need to look for them in the context. Okay. In fact, it's right here. I don't even have to go anywhere. Again, a completely separate mini paragraph right before the last line of the passage. Okay. It says, all over China, even in small and medium cities, local governments are nurturing science parks to encourage software development, providing incentives in tax research and investment, research and investment. All three are covered, right? Do I have all my points covered here? I do. Incentives tax, funding, research, nurturing, all of the above, right? It has to be all of the above, all of the above, E, yeah? So again, I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to move forward. You get the idea, right? You, you get the idea of how to do this, how to approach reading comprehension section. Don't get bothered or perturbed by the length of the passage. That is why approach two is there. Analyze questions, identify keywords, look for keywords, look for, what do I say? Topic sentence, closing sentence. Yeah, but which means even for approach two, you need to be very fast, which means you need to have an eye for detail. It's not very easy, no? Such a long passage here in the screen, like somebody pointed out, here in the screen, I'm able to quickly identify, but in the, in the exam, I still need to go back and forth and I need to have an eye for detail, right? When I'm applying the technique of scanning, I need to have an eye for detail to be able to pick up the answer quickly. So for questions like this, right, where the, it's very straightforward, no inference based questions where you have to guess what the answer is, right? It's not like they've taken a, uh, phrase and asking you what does this phrase mean in the context of the passage that that requires a lot of reasoning here these are answers directly supported by the passage direct reference not inference based yeah 